Hi, I'm Joe, and today we're going to take a look at how the LV1 mixing console deals with latency and how we can benefit from that in order to have the absolute lowest latency in the universe. So let's go. So latency is the time it takes for a audio signal to be converted into digital, processed in the mixing console, then be converted back to analog. And most mixing consoles have a fixed latency, but the LV1 uh, works in a slightly different way. So it's actually possible to have different latencies on different outputs. And where latency is kind of crucial is with in-ear monitors. With PA systems, not all that crucial. It's something that you have to be aware of, but it's not as crucial as within uh, in-ear systems. So with the LV1 system, it's possible to have the latency as low as 0.8 milliseconds, but it's uh, kind of easy to screw this up. I've done it several times. So let's go through things and I'll show you how uh, you should set this up in order to have the least amount of latency possible. So let's start on the setup page. Uh, here we go to the, to the server and server network buffer. So in this case, it's set to uh, 40 samples or 0.8 milliseconds. Only reason, in my opinion, to have anything else but 0.8 uh, would be maybe if you're running just front of house and latency isn't all that crucial, then you could raise this to gain a bit more power from the server. But as a starting point, I will always suggest go to uh, for the, the lowest setting. Moving on, we're going to the mixer settings and and make sure that we select align by mix bus slash delay group and this makes it possible to have different latencies for different outputs. You could of course select uh, entire mixer align and that would be if you're running only front of house and you don't want to deal with any of the delay group stuff but I almost always use uh, align by mix bus delay group. Moving on to the patch page, here I've chosen five stereo auxes that could be in-air monitors and these are sent out on uh, output 1 through 10. Moving on we have the left right going on output 11 and 12 uh, and I also have my Q mix going out on the headphone outs. And up until this point, it's kind of the same as any console, but it's from this point on, uh, the LV1 system works a bit differently. So let's go to the delay tab. Here I've set up five uh, monitor delay groups, one group for PA and one for the Q mix. And these correspond to the physical outputs from the previous patch page. And what this all means is that I can have different latency for all of these different delay groups. So the latency for the in-ears don't have to be the same as the latency for the PA or for my uh, Q headphones. If you were to do wedges up on stage, uh, one could argue that it would make sense to have all the wedges to have the same latency. In that case, we would just use one latency group for all of the wedges and that would look like this, then all of the outputs 1 through 10 would have the same latency. But let's separate things uh, because uh, if we're talking about in-air mixes, it makes sense to have uh, everything separated from each other. So that's the setup. Now let's have a look at how to mess things up. So here's a quite simple uh, setup. Uh, we have uh, two channels, we have two effects, we have two in-air monitors and we have the PA on the left right. And right now we don't have any plugins engaged and we can see that the total uh, latency is zero milliseconds, which actually is kind of misleading because uh, it says zero, but the lowest we can get is 0 0.8. So whatever value we see here in the delay window uh, will be added to the uh, 0 0.8 eight milliseconds. So if we uh, select channel one and uh, let's uh, enable this plugin, which I know have some latency built in. We now can see that the PA delay group have 1.77 milliseconds of uh, latency due to this plugin. 
However, the, the monitor delay groups are still set at zero because we're not sending this channel to any of the, the in-ears yet. So let's send to uh, monitor one. And as soon as we uh, switch on the, the send, uh, the monitor one delay group will also have 1.77 milliseconds of delay. Uh, if we turn on all of these, uh, now everything has the same uh, kind of uh, delay. Uh, so let's turn these off again and move back out. If we then were to send this channel to an effect, uh, this would add even more latency. So let's choose effect one and uh, let's en engage uh, to kind of process heavy or rather uh, latency heavy uh, plugins. And right now we can see that uh, the latency for the PA is up to 5.13 milliseconds due to the latency within the effects. However, if we go back to channel one and send this one to the monitors, uh, the monitors will still be at 1.77 milliseconds because uh, the effect is not sent to the monitors. It's, it's just this channel with this plugin. So here's an example of having different delays for different delay groups. If we were to, let's go into the effect one. If we were to send this one to the monitor one, we will see that this would have the same kind of delay as the PA because both the channel and the effect is sent to the monitor. So having 5.13 milliseconds of delay in the PA would not worry me all that much. That's kind of fine. But to have over 5 milliseconds of delay for in-ears, that would absolutely worry me. So uh, this is not a great way of, of uh, doing things. So let's have a look at another way. So let's turn uh, these off again. So we're back to having no extra latency uh, for the monitors. So what I would suggest is to duplicate all the input channels. So you have one set of channels going to the PA and another set of channels that's going to the in-ears, whether it's uh, in-ears or, or uh, wedges. Same for the effects. So in this case, let's say uh, channel one is for the PA, channel two is for in-ears. So let's go into channel two. And here we can choose to enable the Sheps Omnichannel. And this one don't add any extra latency. Uh, so if we were to send this one to the monitors, we will see there is no extra latency added. Uh, checking out uh, effect number two, let's enable the H reverb. And same thing, this reverb don't add any extra latency. This one we can send to all of the monitors without having any extra latency added. So right now we have channel one going to effect one uh, and on to the PA. The latency is an extra five milliseconds. Uh, channel two and effect two, uh, they are going to monitors and since they are low latency plugins, there will be no extra uh, latency added. And this is all perfect, but where I mess up from time to time is that I, by mistake, send uh, channel one in this case to, let's say, uh, effect number two. And now I've added uh, 1.77 milliseconds of uh, latency on the in-ears uh, because I, by mistake, sent channel one that's supposed to go only to the PA. I sent that to the monitor effect. If I turn this off, we're back to zero latency. Or if I, again, by mistake, send, let's say, uh, effect one, I will send this to monitor one. I've added 5.13 milliseconds of delay because of the delay within these uh, plugins. So it's kind of a good practice to keep an eye on the delay page 
here I can see that monitor 1, 2 and 3 have more latency than I would expect. Uh, I then typically go to this effect monitor 1 page where I kind of get an, uh, a good overview. And here I can see, all right, uh, channel 1 is supposed to only send to effect 1. So let's turn this off and then the delay page, we can see that we're back to zero milliseconds for all of the monitor systems. To me, it's awesome to have this flexibility. The kind of downside is that you need to be aware of where you're sending things. So that's all I have to say about latency. If you have any further questions, just let me know. I'll be happy to answer anything I can. Take care. <laughs>